Welcome back to another YouTube video. This is my second YouTube video, I think, and I thought, why not just jump in at the deep end and tackle the picture that you've probably seen everywhere. If you're new, maybe you haven't seen it, but if you've been following me on either TikTok or Instagram, where I basically started, you will have seen the photo. I'll put them on the screen. There was a time in my life where I had a lot of closed comedones, having always been someone who was prone to clogged pores. But there was a time where it got really, really bad. And obviously skin texture is normal, but it's also normal to want to improve it if it's making you feel not good. Feel not good? Not feel good. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why I got them, why people get closed comedones, why you've got clogged pores, how to understand the reason you have them and fix them. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what products I used, what routine I used. I still use the same routine today and it keeps me clog free. There won't be any gatekeeping. You can literally copy my exact routine if you want to, but I'm also gonna show you alternatives so you can sub in products that maybe don't ship to where you live or, or not in the right budget for you. I think the main part for me is I'm just gonna show you like how to understand your skin to get yourself out of a sticky position. Because what I've learned is that I wish my skin, like once I fix this problem, will just never have any problems ever again. But if you watch my content, you're probably someone who isn't born with, hasn't been born with perfect skin. And something that I've had to get over is the fact that there'll probably be another skin problem that I'll have to face. I mean, after the closed comedones, I faced perioral dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis. I mean, I have PCOS, so that makes having skin really fun as well. Yeah, I've come to accept that once you get over one skincare problem, it's better to just understand your skin and how to fix things and why they happen because they probably might happen again or something else is gonna happen in the future. So the key part here is that not only am I gonna show you without gatekeeping everything that I did, so you can copy it if you want, but I'm also gonna show you and try and help you understand why it's happening. So that if something happens again in the future, you can understand what's going on to then fix it without having to just try loads of products, spend loads of money on things because you don't truly understand what's going on. That's the key point. It took me a while to get there, but we're gonna dive in now. I'm so sorry as well, if you can hear loads of building work. I live in East London. There's a lot of building going on. The person upstairs is renovating their flat and someone in the distance, distance is doing roadworks. So let's talk about what causes clogged pores. The technical name for clogged pores is closed comedy. Closed comedones and clogged pores are pretty much the same thing. You might find somebody who makes a video dissecting the exact difference between the two and why this isn't exactly that. But for the purposes of this video, clogged pores pretty much are closed comedones. I've made a list of three things that I think most commonly cause closed comedones, which I'll go through. And then one thing which is less common but still happens. The first one is just not cleansing your skin properly. This is a really, really common one. If you were to set a timer and do your facial cleansing at night, you might feel like you're cleansing for a long enough time, but if you looked at the timer, you might actually realize you're only cleansing for like 10 seconds, 15, 20 seconds. And in reality, that's just not long enough. The cleansing part of your routine is what sets up the whole rest of your routine to be successful. So if you don't get the cleansing part right, you're kind of failing at the first hurdle, even though that's a very negative way to look at it, but that's kind of what's going on. Let's call a spade a spade. So people are often not using appropriate cleansing products. For example, maybe you've worn SPF and makeup for the whole day, but you're just using one cleanser to take it all off. There's probably lots of residue left over on your skin and that's what's contributing to the clogged pores. I know this is a really popular thing to do, but if for example, you use a cleanser and then you get tone, like a toner pad or cotton and you put toner on it or micellar water afterwards, and why put a ball across your face and there's still color coming off, that doesn't mean that the micellar water got the remaining bits of dirt and makeup and SPF off your face. It means that your cleanser hasn't cleansed your face properly and there's definitely some residue basically still left on your face. So if that's what you're doing, I would definitely change that. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about how to change that to be a more effective way of cleansing later on. But if you feel like the micellar water or the toner is just getting off that last remaining bit of dirt, that really is just an illusion. It looks like that to you, but really it's just saying the cleanser didn't cleanse properly. There's still makeup dirt, SPF left on your face, and you're just seeing what's on the toner pad, but it indicates that there's way more left on your face that you can't actually see to the human eye. Following on from that, there's not double cleansing or double cleansing incorrectly. You're not spending long enough with your double cleanse. I always recommend a minute for the oil cleanse and a minute or 45 seconds for the water-based cleanser afterwards. On that same note, if you're using two water-based cleansers in a row, I feel like that's gonna dry you out a lot and still not remove makeup as effectively as using an oil-based cleanser than a water-based cleanser. I'll put a link in the description box of this video to a video of me on TikTok where I'm doing an in-depth video about double cleansing. So like products to use, how long to do it for, technique, emulsification step, everything that you wanna know. I won't 
talk about it here because that might not be relevant to you but any videos I do reference will be in the description box below and I have a lot of detailed content on TikTok as well. The third reason you might have closed comedones and to be honest usually most people have at least one or two or a combination of all of these factors and once they find that one that's contributing the most to it or they address all of them and just slightly tweak their routine they see the reduction in closed comedones in the coming weeks and months because obviously nothing happens overnight especially not with closed comedones that's why they're such a bitch the third reason is that there's just something in your routine that is causing you closed comedones and a lot of people are very attached to the products in their routine if they've been using it for a long time for example a moisturizer if you use a very rich moisturizer it may well be that and also sometimes products cause closed comedones on specific areas of the face but not others for example my forehead i get closed comedones on my forehead very easily they're not necessarily caused by that same product on my cheeks it can be very frustrating yeah so a lot of people are using an spf that's causing them closed comedones or a moisturizer or foundation or concealer or both or all of them it is more likely to be something like a sunscreen or a moisturizer rather than like a serum just because it's a lot lighter it may still be the serum but it's more likely to be the moisturizer or the sunscreen those are the three main ones and then there's one that i've been thinking about more recently um and it's when there's a sudden change in oil production in your skin and that can happen sometimes when people have been on Accutane and they come off it Accutane shrinks the oil glands and then <clears throat> when they stop using Accutane for some people their oil, oil glands stay the same some go immediately back to normal others are somewhere in the middle and that can cause a sudden surge of oil production and the skin is essentially not prepared and it creates a lot of closed comedones in one go that also can happen so Maybe between those four things that I've listed, some of them will be ringing bells for you. When it comes to the products in your routine that are causing you closed comedones, you are going to find it really difficult to stop having closed comedones if you continue using that product. A lot of people will try and counteract the effect of those products by using something like salicylic acid. And unfortunately, that's just going to be, you're just going to be fighting an uphill battle. Like, you need to remove the source. And I'm not saying it's easy to know which of those products is the problem. I'm just saying that needs to be something that you're thinking about because if you don't remove the source, not really gonna remove the problem. It's a bit like the root cause. It gets talked a lot about in skincare and health, but the root cause is what you're looking for and you need to remove it rather than try and fight against it. Now I'll talk about what caused my closed comedones. I remember being like 15 when I wasn't even really, I mean, I was using skincare at 15, not a lot though, not like a Sephora kid routine. I was experimenting though. And I remember getting clo closed comedones and clogged pores so easily and being like, why, what is this? How can I get rid of it? I remember getting the train to my part-time job and like looking at my skin in the reflection of the train window and seeing them and also on the bus to college. And I've just always been clogged pore prone. And I suppose if you're watching this video, you probably are clogged pore prone as well. Some people just don't get them. It's, it's very rude. But for me, I'd happen to find a routine, as, as we all do. We find a routine that works for us eventually. And if I deviate from that, I do tend to get clogged pores quite easily. And I have to put myself back into like clogged pore rehab. But it's quite an exhausting cycle, to be honest. What really fucked me over was a Kiehl's moisturiser. And I'll put it on the screen. It's the Kiehl's, I think it's called the Ultra Facial Moisturiser, but it's not in the tub, it's in the bottle. I had been using the Kiehl's Moisturiser SPF 30 in the bottle that looks identical, it's just one has SPF. For years, when I started using a retinoid, I thought, I'll use something thicker. I'll use the moisturiser non-SPF version just as a moisturiser. I think this is a key learning that I've had, and I see a lot of people go wrong with this. It's a really common misconception that products in the same product range are the same product with something slightly different. I'll give you an example, the Cetaphil Daily Hydrating Moisturiser. I've got it here. I've got fucking loads of bottles behind this camera, all empty, I need to throw them away. Everyone asks me, because they see that I use this in my routine all the time, everyone asks me, what do you think about the SPF version of this product? And they've also got a rich night cream. A lot of people, it basically insinuates to me that they think that the SPF version is the same, but with SPF, or the night cream is the same but thicker. It's a totally different product. It's just got a similar packaging because it's in the same range, but those product formulas are totally different. So if you've been burned like I was years ago by a product that you thought would be the same, but with SPF or the same, but a light version, it's a totally different formula. 
Sure, it has similarities, but to make it have SPF or to make it rich or lighter, it's using totally different ingredients. And I think people don't realize that that much and it lands them in doo-doo. Did I just say doo-doo? I did. But that's just something that I think is really important to know, period. Moisturizer is what caused mine. And it took me a while to realize because I was also purging from my retinoid which is a common situation that we find ourselves in. So if that is something that you find yourself in, I do highly recommend obviously plugging myself here, but that's that intersection. This black IP is pretty good. Can you guess which East London city I live in just by the, just the vibes that I've got today. I kind of lost my train of thought because of the black IPs. peas. They were my fave childhood band. But basically the moisturizer is what caused mine. So I don't mean to plug myself shamelessly, but if that is where you're at with your skincare journey, I, my content is for you, like it is quite niche. Now I wanna talk a little bit about what I changed to get to where I am now. Where I am now has been maintained by the same routine, give or take one product that got discontinued, two that got discontinued, but the active ingredients are basically the same. So it's not like I got rid of my clothes comb and and then changed my routine a little bit here and there all throughout the last two years. This is the exact routine that worked for me and I'm gonna share it with you. So first I'll talk about what I changed in my routine to fix my clothes comb and and they kind of, all these points correspond to the causes of the clothes comb and in the first place. Because I'm so prone to closed comedones, I try and basically check every box so that there's no chance that my routine can cause the closed comedones. And that's quite annoying, but it's what I would suggest to you if that's also your problem and it bothers you that you get a lot of closed comedones. So when it comes to cleansing, I need to make sure that I'm removing my makeup and SPF properly. I wear SPF every day and I wear makeup sometimes. So every day for me, most of the time, unless I'm ill and I don't feel like wearing SPF, for example, is a double cleanse day. There's no need to double cleanse in the morning, but double cleansing in the evening if you're wearing SPF or just makeup or both of them, I think is really important if you really care about the closed comedones and preventing the closed comedones. There's a lot of information on the internet where they say, well, you don't need to double cleanse or like double cleansing isn't that important. And I really think it entirely depends on you. If you are bothered by closed comedones and you're prone to them or you are prone to acne and you wear makeup and SPF and you don't want acne or closed comedones, I do think double cleansing is important. Not much skincare is actually essential, but it's about what you want to achieve with it. So some things, in my opinion, like double cleansing are essential if that's what you want to achieve. I'll put a link to a video in the description box. It's one of my TikTok videos, but it is a long, detailed, in-depth video about how to double cleanse, what cleansers I currently use, although I'll put them in the description box as well how long to double cleanse for, the technique I use, how I massage it into my face, which cloths I use, why I use a cloth, whether you have to use a cloth, like all of those detailed questions I get all the time are in that video. The second thing I changed for my routine is I basically knocked out a bunch of trial and error to figure out which things clogged me and which didn't. If you're gonna trial, trial and error with different skincare products, which you probably will have to, make sure you do them one at a time because if you add two products or two or three products into your routine at a time you won't know which one's clogging you and it's quite a slow process to unclog your skin to then try them again so i'd always recommend to try any new product no matter pretty much no matter who you are unless you literally have zero skin problems ever try them one at a time because if you don't it could be gnarly and you just won't know what's going on and it can feel quite frustrating and confusing trust me i've been there many times and the last thing which is one of the most important things that keeps my skin clear and gives it the texture that it now has in comparison to the old picture using a retinoid is its whole own topic of course and expect lots of videos about retinoids from me currently i do have because obviously this is my second video on youtube but currently i do have a blog my skincare blog maybe like 50 60 posts on it now a lot of them are about retinoids i have a whole section on retinoids that i recommend ranging from low to high with advice on which ones to choose and they'll be in the description box as well i'll briefly talk about why i choose a retinoid and not something like salicylic acid which to be honest gets more press about unclogging pores and keeping pores clear. Salicylic acid is an acid that penetrates the pore a little bit more deeply than an alpha hydroxy acid, for example, glycolic acid. They work more on the surface of the skin and salicylic acid goes deeper into the pore and breaks up what's in the pore. And it kind of gets washed away with the cleanse or the toner or with time and consistent use. Personally, I find salicylic acid to be very drying long-term. I don't find my skin ever gets used to it. I just find it makes me look quite red, patchy, flaky, uncomfortable. It's never really been my friend, but it's not that it's not good. 
I just think there's way more effective ways to have clear skin and smooth texture. I personally just think retinoids are far more effective for unclogging pores and keeping them clear for pretty much all skin types, maybe not rosacea, although rosacea skin can sometimes tolerate it. It just really depends on you as a person. Lysolic acid goes into the pore and breaks up what's in it and washes it away. Obviously it doesn't do all of that in one sitting. It takes time to unclog the pores. Anything takes time to unclog pores. If anyone's telling you that something will work overnight, they're just a big fat liar or they don't really know what they're talking about. When it comes to a retinoid, it works in a totally different way. A lot of people think that retinoids are an exfoliant, but they're not. They give a similar, what's the word I'm looking for? Retinoids give an effect that seems like an exfoliant, but it's not technically an exfoliant. Retinoids basically speed up your skin cell cycle. So every six weeks or so, your skin replaces itself by way of shedding from the surface layer. Any pimple or clogged pore or p potential imperfection is waiting in the wings. Pimples don't just suddenly come out of nowhere. They might seem like they do, but really they've been forming beneath the surface for a while. That's why when you start using a retinoid, you might get a lot more spots than you had before. And it's not because it's giving you new spots. It's because it's speeding up your skin cell cycle and therefore all the spots that were to come later are just happening now. They call this the purging phase because it just all comes out at once. It happens usually between the first week and the third month. Sometimes it can go on a little bit longer. People who are more acne prone and tend to have a worse one, I'll actually get into what to expect when you start using a retinoid later on. But retinoids are completely different from salicylic acid. They're often compared, but they are very different things. I think some further proof to show you why I think retinoids are slightly better than salicylic acid for most people, not for everyone, when it comes to unclogging pores and keeping pores clear, is the fact that if you visit any dermatologist, even a GP, but let's talk about a dermatologist, many different creams and things they could give you for unclogging your pores. Pretty much all of them are a retinoid. There's differin, which is the same thing as adapalene. There's epiduo, which combines benzoyl peroxide, which is antibacterial, with adapalene. There's tretinoin, there's tazarotene, there's trifarotene. If you go to the dermatologist and they give you a topical medication, aka a cream or a gel, pretty much always gonna be a retinoid. There are obviously some exceptions, like for example, azelaic acid. They might give that to you if you have rosacea. They might also give you azelaic acid and a retinoid. Most of the time, if clogged pores and acne is your problem, they're gonna give you some form of topical retinoid. It effectively clears and prevents pimples from forming from the inside out, and salicylic acid just can't do that. And that is why I'm such a retinoid stan. Next, I wanna to touch on pore clogging ingredients just for a little bit, because pore clogging ingredients, you can see everywhere on TikTok. There's, there's literally 16 year olds in their bedrooms making posts about skincare products without pore clogging ingredients. And at the under, other end of the spectrum, you've got people like Dr. Dre, who's one of my favorite YouTubers, making video where you can see how visibly pissed off she is about the post that the 16 year olds talking about pore clogging ingredients are making. There is a comedogenicity scale and in the past ingredients were tested on rabbit ears and the backs of humans as in a human's back to see how quickly a comedone formed. Based on how quickly it formed and how severe it was they would give it a rating. The higher the rating supposedly the more comedogenic. The problem is that what makes one person's pores clog is different to the other person. Something can break me out, but not my friend. That's why you like products that your friends don't like. The other problem with the comedogenicity scale is the fact that we're not rabbits. You can't really apply something that happened to a rabbit to a human and say that it's bulletproof, it's just not gonna be. The other thing to know is that unfortunately the term non-comedogenic doesn't mean anything. Totally unregulated term. I could make a product tomorrow and just say that it was non-comedogenic because anyone can say that anything is non-comedogenic. There's not really, to the current level of knowledge, any way to guarantee something won't break you out. So it's not like they're misusing the term, it's that the term doesn't actually mean anything. I appreciate that this is annoying information, if this is new information to you. It's better to know, I think, than not know. If you're still confused by this topic, I have written a blog post about it, so I will link that in the description box below as well. Now I'll show you my exact routine, the products that I've been using for years, since I found the routine that worked for my clogged pores. I'm not gonna talk about eye creams because I change them all the time. You can pretty much use any eye cream you want if you have clogged prone skin. If you're prone to getting milia under your eyes, I would recommend a retinoid eye cream at night and something that's not too rich in the morning. I actually don't cleanse my skin in the morning, which is very shocking to people. I think if you have clogged prone skin, you can totally do it. It's just about getting the rest of your routine right. I don't seem to have any issues having not cleansed my skin in the morning for maybe four years now. I can make a whole separate video on why I don't do that, but I'm not gonna get into that today. So I wake up, I don't splash my face with water. I, like at all, people always ask me that, do you at least wash with water? No, that's, it's not doing anything. 
like washing with water isn't doing anything. It just feels like it's doing something and that makes people feel better. This serum has been reformulated. I used it for a week. I left a review on the reformulation a couple of weeks ago. But for now, I need to get through my backlog. It's the Purito Unscented Centella Serum. It's a barrier serum. It has things like Centella, Madagascaride. On my blog and in my retinoid guide, I have several other serums that you can replace this with if this doesn't agree with you or you don't want to buy it. The reason I use it morning and night is because my skin, I think my skin is quite fragile. I've learned that over the years. It's very easily upset. And by using something that's soothing and restoring multiple times a day, every day, I have way less issues and I recommend barrier serums to literally anyone because I think everyone can benefit from them. It's one of those things where you don't see the benefit until you do because you realise it's been like a whole year and you haven't had any skin flare ups and it's thanks to having the right routine and also putting more time and effort into protecting your skin. Next up is my trusty Cetaphil Daily Hydrating Moisturiser. I can't tell you how many of these I bought, probably 20, 30 maybe. They don't last very long. I wish it was bigger. I wish it was bigger. Maybe I'll see if they'll make a bigger one if I message them about it. This is a moisturiser that I really like. It's very thin and light, but it isn't so light that it feels like it's doing nothing. I personally think there are far richer creams that just sink into your skin and feel like you never had anything on. If you compare it to this, I feel like this packs more of a punch than a lot of richer creams. I think you just need to get used to it though. I think some people are not used to using such a light cream but when you actually use it you realize it's doing everything it needs to do. I use the barrier serum then the moisturizer and then my current SPF at the moment although I'm trying to replace it is this ultraviolet clean screen. It says it's a mineral sunscreen it's lying it contains butyloxal salicylate which has been doing the rounds on social media lately basically it's like an unregistered chemical filter it's a booster an spf booster I find it in most mineral sunscreens as soon as i started looking just for a mineral sunscreen i realized how many mineral sunscreens are not actually mineral it's tinted i wish it was spf 50 i'm trying to replace it because although i like the way it looks in the morning it dries down very matte and i'm a lot more of a glowy girl so i'm just constantly trying to replace it but struggling and when it comes to the evening routine, I've got my double cleansing cleansers. This is the Jordan Samuel oil cleanser. It's a gel to oil cleanser and it's called the after show treatment cleanser and I get the sensitive skin version. And I've got the Dr. Sam's, I think it's called flawless cleanser. Yeah, it's the texture of ultrasound jelly if you've ever had an ultrasound. It doesn't foam. I've probably been using this for like four years and it's pretty much my ride or die. These two are pretty much my ride or die. We'll be so upset if these get Everything I like is getting discontinued at the moment. Sam, Jordan, don't do that to me. This is different. It's upside down. This is different. If you're in the UK, you can, people always ask me this, how can I get different from my GP? They always say, how can I get it? And I say, well, ask them. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just like, ask, ask them. Um, I don't know about you guys. Maybe me and my GP have a very different relationship from everybody else, but they are used to me saying, hello, can I get this prescription? And they're kind of like, why do you need it? And I'm like, I just need it. I don't, I always provide justification, but it's the easiest way to get this in the UK. I think most GPs are happy to provide it. If you just say to them, um, I'd really like to request different because I, or you can say Adapalene, they might they might say like, oh, different Adapalene, just one or the other, they're the same thing. If you ask for Adapalene, they'll probably give you this. You can just say, I've been struggling with my skin. I'd really like to try different Adapalene um please can i have a prescription for it and this will last you ages anyway that's what i currently use i previously used tretinoin from dermatica loved it had to stop using it because my perioral dermatitis got quite bad and differin is known to be less irritating than tretinoin i do feel like that's how it's played out so i just stick with what works one that i used to get to that transformation that you've seen is called a Ven Triacnil. I'll put it in the description box, but you'll really struggle to get your hands on it because it's been discontinued, which is why I created my retinoid guide. And I promise this whole video is not just to plug the retinoid guide, but the reason I made a retinoid guide is because one has the same questions, so I made it into a guide. But if you don't wanna, if you want, if you don't wanna do the guide, there's this video. The blog post is pretty much a written version of this video. Um, I also have fucking loads of videos on my TikTok. Not so much on my Instagram, but on my TikTok, loads of detailed videos. I've got a retinoid playlist. I've got a frequently asked question playlist. Like retinoid, I call me the retinoid diary. I'll also put in the description box below a link to a video of me showing you how to apply a retinoid. I'm using different in the video, but it applies to any retinoid. They're kind of all very similar. I'm not gonna say the same, they're all very similar. 
and in that video it just shows you point blank me applying my retinoid and talking you through it. Now for the alternative products, if the ones that I've shown you are difficult to find, not in your region, too expensive, too cheap, whatever, I'm going to list them all in the description box below. And the way that I've designed it is so that you can take products from each category and mix and match them. So in the morning you need your barrier serum, your moisturiser and your sunscreen. If you don't want the ones that I've suggested, you can pick any barrier serum, any moisturiser, any sunscreen. In the evening, the schedule is the same. Double cleanse, oil, then water, retinoid, barrier serum, moisturiser. You can literally go, I want this retinoid and that barrier serum, and you just put them in the order that I've laid it out in. So there's one order for everyone and you pick and choose the products you wanna, you wanna choose. I think I'm gonna get questions saying which is the best retinoid to start with because I get that question all the time. And it is really quite a difficult question to answer because there is no one best answer. And I wish that there was, but there wasn't. The higher strength you go, the quicker results you'll have, but the more irritating it will be. It'll be more of a journey. You need to prepare yourself more. The higher strength just means it's more irritating and that comes with more redness, flakiness, more purging, more acne. It's, it's a big thing. And if you're in the mood for that, fine. But if you're not in the mood for that and you want a gentle progression, you probably will have some purging still, some dryness, some redness, but it'd be a lot more gentle. Then go for something that is slightly weaker, um, such as retinaldehyde. It really all just depends on what you're looking to achieve and what you're willing to tolerate, because a lot of people don't want to put themselves through a big old transformation. On my blog post and in my guide, it shows you all the different options. They're all the same options that I'm gonna put in the description box. So anywhere you go, they'll be the same options. And I basically just say in that guide, if you're not sure what to pick, don't overthink it. So many people feel like if they just choose the perfect retinoid, they'll get the perfect results. It's just not like that. Most people, if they pick a retinoid that's say from like retinal, anywhere between retinaldehyde and Tretinoin. If you pick one and you commit to it for six months, people will have similar results in six months. Realistically, all things considered, they'll have a, a similar amount of progress. I think where people go wrong is they just spend ages thinking that choosing the right retinoid is a really big deal. And I totally understand that because it feels like a really big deal. But looking back on it and now having tried loads of different retinoids, I just think the most important thing is to start and be prepared. And by be prepared, I mean you have a routine that's working for you and you're using a barrier serum or toner or something something to help your barrier it doesn't matter if it's a serum or a toner or a cream hi guys my camera is new and i'm new, new to youtube in general so my camera just randomly turned off the other day and ran out of battery and i didn't know why at the time but i've now fixed it so it is a completely different day it's like i think it's friday and i started filming that on monday but we're gonna get straight back into it i have mapped it all out so i know where we were. So this next section is what to expect when using a retinoid. The first thing I wanna talk about, I've kind of already talked about it, is why purging happens. I won't go into too much detail, but the purge it is to be expected. And there's a lot of misinformation on social media, which annoys me specifically about the purge. Or should I be a bit more center? Basically, the purge is just when the retinoid is speeding up your skin cell cycle and it's pushing everything out. So closed comedones, whiteheads, any kind of imperfection that's within your skin is just going to come out and that's why a lot of people think that the retinoid is not working or why they think it's given them closed comedones. A lot of people stop using a retinoid because they think I've got so many more new closed comedones after using that retinoid or that retinoid ruined my skin. In reality you already had those closed comedones, they didn't look like closed comedones but if you imagine like something coming out of a very tight hole, I tried to think of an example but I couldn't think of any appropriate examples. Essentially you've got little imperfections forming under your skin and then they have to come out through your pore and the retinoid is causing them to come out very quickly so you get a lot of them all at once whereas before it would have taken weeks and months they're all coming up out of your skin and it's physical blockages of like dead skin cells sebum it's trying to come out and it's kind of getting stuck halfway and it doesn't just fall out otherwise we'd have a really big problem that's basically why you get loads of closed comedones because it's not that you've got new closed comedones it's that things underneath your skin are coming out of the surface and eventually they will, with continued use of the retinoid, they will just come out. Like you'll, sometimes you'll be able to like pull them out. It's how it happen, it's very weird. But yes, it's very unlikely that the retinoid has given you new acne. It's much, much more likely that the retinoid is doing its job. And unfortunately in life, nothing is for free. I wish it was, but especially not with skin, as I've learned. 
that is why purging happens. It's normal if you're more acne prone, it's more likely that you'll have a purge. Some people don't have purges because they weren't that acne prone in the first place. Usually the purge will happen within the first week like it will start to happen maybe after a couple of applications. It really depends on the person, the retinoid, the rest of your skincare routine, how acne prone you are, and also how often you're applying it. For example, if you're applying it every day, which I don't recommend in the beginning, your purge will happen quicker and faster. And it will also be over faster because you're just, it's like, it's like pressing go on like the accelerator pedal. You're like, yep, come on, keep coming. Like, speed up the skin cycle, let's push it all out. Whereas if you do it once a week, it's quite like, it's like gentle nudges. Um, the benefit of the gentle nudging technique is that you get less irritation, redness, less purging all at once, it's less traumatic. The drawback is maybe it takes longer to complete the purge, but at least you'll have your skin barrier intact and your skin won't have melted off. The biggest piece of misinformation that I see on social media a lot that's really bothering me is this thing about using moisturiser as either like the sandwich method or the buffering method and how that will stop you from purging. The logic doesn't logic there and it bothers me because there's so many people who will do stuff just for views and I think that's what people don't understand, like skin top is full of people doing stuff just because they like the views, like so many BS videos on TikTok with like hacks that the person posting, they know it doesn't work but they just want the views, it's kind of kind of pisses me off and a lot of other people are for sure that I've spoken to about like friends that I have. Anyway that was a bit of a tangent but basically the biggest thing that bothers me is the fact that people say if you use a moisturiser after your cleansing and then you let it sit and then you apply a retinoid on top you won't purge as much. That's just not true. What they're talking about if they are partly sane is it takes the edge off the dryness and the redness and the dryness and the redness is quite subjective but that could be classed as part of the purge, but the actual acne breakouts are not going to be less just because you used a moisturiser. There's no part of that logic that makes sense. So if anyone's saying this is how to avoid the purge, only grace I would give them is if they're talking about the redness and the dryness, because yes, that will help. But if they're talking about this is how to use a retinoid and not break out, they don't understand what they're talking about, or they do, and they're just selling you a dream because they want you to follow them period. What else to expect while you're purging? As I've said, acne, redness, dryness, flakiness. Your skin might feel tight. All of these things are part of the retinization process. Retinization is basically your skin just getting used to the retinoid. And that's why a lot of people decide that retinoids aren't for them because they use it for a couple of weeks and they're like, oh, this isn't nice. But sadly, they just don't, they don't know because companies don't really, they, imagine if a company was like, use this product and wait four months and have a terrible time and at the, at the end of it it'll be great. Like they're obviously not going to say that and a lot of them don't even understand it. But yes, that's the reality of it for a lot of people. But that's also why, in my opinion, dermatologists mostly give out topical retinoids for people who have acne because they are super effective and it might not be overnight but nothing in skin is. And retinoids essentially, they can, they can change the way your skin cells function. And people who have acne often have a bit of skin cell dysfunction. Um, so it's almost like taking your skin to Pilates. I've gone off on a tangent, but I feel hopefully there's some value in that. The last section of this video will be advice for best results. And the first thing I'm going to say is please remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. Results take a long time. I often get people asking me saying like from how many months did it take you to get from the before photo to the after photo? I started seeing good results after a month but it took me probably six months to get rid of all of the closed comedones because I had so many and then maybe between like nine months and a year is when I started to be like okay I actually think my skin looks pretty good then once it's all cleared it just gets better and better the other thing I will say is I get a lot of questions where people say I'm using a retinoid but I still get acne and I totally understand where this question comes from the only problem or what I'll explain is Acne obviously comes from many things. It comes from hormones, our genetics. Genetics somewhat control our hormones, um, but so does our environment. And our environment includes the food that we eat, the amount of stress in our lives, the sleep that we get, like duration and quality. Like everything is affecting us in our environment. Most people, if you're a female over the age of like 21 plus basically, 
spots that you're getting are usually to do with your hormones but your hormones can be impacted by what you eat so it's kind of like the circle of life that is why like i've literally got a spot you're not gonna be able to see it i think this camera by the way has some like skin blurring thing but i don't know how to turn it off because it's a vlogging camera and i don't know what i'm doing with it and i just wanted to get started but people getting pimples using retinoids it's not like the expectation is that you start using retinoid and you never get a pimple ever again but you should get a lot less pimples that take less time to go away and less skin texture and just smoother and less acne in general but if you're expecting to never get a pimple ever again i don't think there's anything in the world that can guarantee that because if there was i'd probably take it my other advice is i know i've just recommended a lot of products but Please don't change all of them in one go. It can be a bit of a stuck in the mud situation when people are thinking there's something in my routine that's breaking me out. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to test for it. I don't know which new products I should replace. There's not gonna be a clear answer for that. And for that, I am sorry, because I know that is a frustrating position to be in. A year from now, if you try your best and follow this guideline, I do feel like you'll be able to get there. It seems impossible now, but you will. My advice would be to those people is to just use the retinoid and get used to the retinoid and don't change your routine. As long as you're using sunscreen and some kind of barrier product, I would have those two things because if you're not using sunscreen and using a retinoid, it's kind of, you're kind of like preventing yourself from seeing the full benefits and also it's quite risky because that could be quite damaging to your skin. I would just say as long as you're protecting your skin and you've got something that's hydrating and nourishing to your barrier in your routine, just get the retinoid and get used to it because that in itself is a journey. So get the retinoid and use it for like three to six months minimum. And don't, I know it can be tough, but basically set it and forget it. Like don't question the retinoid. You know it's gonna get worse. It's normal for it to get worse. If, if it doesn't get worse for you also, if you don't have a purge, lucky you. It doesn't mean it's not working. It just means you're lucky. But just use the retinoid and get that part out of the way, which means that when you start experimenting with other products, say for example in six months time the retinoid has stopped you from getting so much acne but you still have closed comedones, you can then be like, cool I've got the retinoid, I don't need to think about it again, I just need to keep using it and stay consistent and then you can try swapping your SPF for like a few months try a couple different SPFs. You might notice the closed comedones go away because the retinoid can do its job and you're no longer using the SPF that was aggravating them and causing them to stay there. That would be my method because either way you have to get used to the retinoid. Might as well do that because that's the one thing that we know for sure. How often to use a retinoid? This is, I guess, within the best results category. I like to keep it simple. The first month, use it one day a week. It can be tempting to go overboard, but I'm gonna save you the trouble of feeling what that's like. Trust me, use it once a week, like every Monday or every Sunday or Thursday for the first four weeks. Then in week two, use it twice a week, space out Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday or Monday and Thursday, second month. Third month, three times, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, it doesn't really matter if the spacing is exact. And at that point, after three months, you should have some results and you will know how your skin responds to the retinoid, and you'll be able to tell if you could handle another day. I only use my retinoid every other day. I've done lots of different ways. At first, I used it every, I think I was using my original one, like three days in a row, one day off. Then sometimes I'd use it every day, but I realized that was a bit too much for me. And then I moved to like two days on, one day off. And then I moved to tretinoin and then different. And what I've found is the sweet spot for me currently is every other day. And I think as long as you're using it every other day, once you've gotten used to it, you're good in terms of using it enough for it to be effective. In the beginning, you're not trying to use it enough for it to be effective, you're just trying to get your skin used to it. So don't think about that once you're past like the three months mark, that's when you wanna be using it, I would say, at least three times a week. Whether you do three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off, that's six times a week, or you do every other day, that works out to three or four times a week. That would be my recommendation. This is obviously my first video on the closed comedone saga. I'm sure there'll be many more. If you have any specific questions or things that you wanna suggest as a video topic, just let me know, comment below. And the last thing I will do is plug my retinoid guide, just because everything that I've just said might be helpful me saying it to you now, but if you want it written down, like I said, I've got my blog, which is similar. And then on the blog, you can find the guide or you can get the guide in the description box. It, it, it is paid for as a guide that you'd have to pay to download, but it's got everything there for you. And if that's not what you wanna do, that's totally fine. Like I said, I've got the blog that's free, this video and like all of the resources that are on my TikTok and Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. I'm starting to really like YouTube. So 
I hope you do too.